it's testing time for this little Harvard. I've got it on the workbench now again and I'm going to do all the various tests on it. We've done everything else on it um, to get it working but I've not actually done any proper testing to see if it's up to spec, what kind of power it's putting out. Um, I did check it earlier, demonstrate it on the um, software dis defined radio USB dongle which proved that the deviation is is way out. That's all we know. I deliberately didn't touch it because I'm waiting to do it on the proper test equipment. Oh. Today we're going to do it. We've got the spec sheet here, all the details as to what it should perform like and now we're going to go through it bit by bit on the test equipment and see how well it performs and if it does come up to spec. So without any further delays, let's get it connected up to the test equipment and see how it performs. It's a, it's a nice little radio, it's even got the original Harvard microphone and there's not many still around with the original mics. Right, so let's get it connected. The next thing we're going to do on the radio is check the voltage controlled oscillator. This is like the heart of the radio in a way. It's what controls all the frequencies on receive and on transmit. And the frequencies that the oscillator generates on receive are different to the frequencies on transmit. It's just the way it works. So we've got the test meter rigged up to the test points. Here we've got a little test point for measuring the voltage coming out of the VCO oscillator. It should be somewhere between 2 volts and 4 volts. It starts out around about 2 volts on channel 1 and goes up to around about 4 volts on channel 40. I say roundabout, um, it, the, the oscillator is controlled, it's a variable capacitor, in this case a variable capacitor diode and by changing the voltage on the diode you change the voltage on the, uh, you change the capacity of the tuned circuit and the frequency varies. So here we are on channel 1 and uh, it's, uh, it's round about 2 volts. If you look at the meter, it's 2.196, which is, is near enough. I say it's between 2 and 4 volts, but you can stretch it. Um, years ago, in the 80s, when I was converting these uh, UK 40 channel sets to cover 80 channels, to cover the SEP channels as well, or the EU channels, you stretched it um, from somewhere like 0.8 of a volt to about... 4 volts, 4.2, something like that, I can't remember exactly, but you pushed it. Um, right, anyway, channel 1, there it is. Here we go to channel 2, see it goes up slightly, channel 3, up a little bit more, channel 4 a bit more, channel 5, as we go up channel 6, channel 7, you see it jumped up a little, just a little bit, just to change the oscillator, to a different frequency. And we'll go right up to channel 40. And there's channel 40. So 3.6 on channel 40, 2. Point something on channel 1. So it's nicely within the operating region of the very cap diode. And you would key up and go and transmit. Um, again, it's, it's reasonable, it's around about the two volts. If it isn't, you can adjust it and go to channel 40 and transmit on channel 40. And again, it's, it's uh, under the four volts. If it wasn't, there's a couple of adjusting points. 
on receive you adjust this little uh, adjustment inside this, this trimmer inside the, the metal uh, can. You do that on the receive uh, side to get it nicely between the 2 and 4 volts and then when you go to transmit um, you adjust it with this little variable capacitor down here to get the transmit on channel. And I'm quite happy with that, that's well within the spec of 2 to 4 volts so if it's within spec why mess about and twiddle it? Leave well alone. That is the, the voltage controlled oscillator all tested, checked and well within spec. The next little check to do on this uh, radio is the power output. See what it's putting out, if anything. Um, it should be 4 watts of course. So let's key it up and see what it is. Yep, there you go, 4 watts. 4 watts pretty much exactly. So again, there's no point in fiddling around, there's no point in twiddling things if it's, uh, if it's right. There are slight signs of the wax having been disturbed on one of the adjustments. Uh, for those not familiar with this model, the, the power output is this little can here, then that one, then that one, and then these two cores. And that's what you have to do to adjust the power output. Seems a crazy, crazy design this. I've never really understood why the designer radio that's capable of putting out about 8 watts and then put a dirty great power resistor here, which gets really hot, to, uh, to limit the power down to 4 watts. But of course if you remove that resistor, so that it runs the 8 watts it's, uh, it seems to be designed for, then the, the output transistor here gets really really hot and eventually burns out so you could only run 8 watts with very very short overs just crazy, not enough heat sink but what a silly design to design a radio for high power and then put a great big resistor in to cut the power down right, I've only got one, one little concern about this which uh, we'll um, look into now and that is the the meter on the radio itself. I don't know if this is going to show up on the uh, on the camera. <clears throat> we'll try. When I key it up on transmit, the meter is going all the way across hard over. Now that's another little adjustment. That's a little adjustment down here by this resistor. And uh, probably somebody's turned it because when the meter goes hard over they think they're getting more power output. They're not. They're just making the meter read higher or lower. Um, and that's all. It's not making any difference to the power output just to the meter. And I, I'm not really keen on seeing the meter go that far over. I'd like to see it go down a little bit less if I can. So we'll just give this a turn. There you go. Make it read about there. Just nice. So that has no effect whatsoever on the power the radio is putting out. It's still putting out 4 watts on the power meter. All it does is change the reading on the meter on the radio so it banged hard over. And uh, to me that's, that's pointless. That's just nice now. It's going over just to the, uh, the start of the, the red. So. To me that's a little uh, more sensible than the meter banging itself hard over because it might, uh, might damage the meter. 
So that concludes the power test on this radio. We'll now on, move on to another test. Next test then is frequency. We've been over most things. So again we're on channel 20. If I have to adjust the frequency on this radio there's a little adjustment core there alongside the crystal. The trick is to find the crystal and the adjustment will be somewhere near that. Actually in the instructions for setting this up they tell you they're assuming straight off the assembly line. I have worked on assembly lines years ago but that's another story. Straight off the assembly line you would trim that and set that to 10.24 but we're not on the assembly line the radio is already working so we put it on channel 20 set up the frequency counter and key up and we should be we should be on 27.79125 so the critical figure is the, the number one 791 kilocycles and then the the 25 is actually 250 hertz 250 cycles so you can ignore that for all practical purposes because 250 cycles it's just neither here nor there on the the band pass we're dealing with so as long as the 27.791 is correct or thereabouts we don't need to worry so let's key up put it on the frequency counter key up and let's see what we get and keying up they are 27.791 0.195 so 0.195 is near enough 0.2 anyway um, so again there's no point there's no point in fiddling around we're close enough to be well 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 within spec and so as I keep saying before if it isn't broke don't touch it so there we are the frequency on transmit pretty much perfect. Well, we move on to the next test then. There's only one more test that I can think of at the moment for the transmitter and that is the deviation and we know on this particular radio the deviation is way way out um, because I tested it earlier on uh, on the SDR dongle. So the only thing to do now is to check the deviation and set it up. And the deviation should be down here, this little thing here, RV3 on this particular one. And uh, we will see. So the deviation meter has been set up to a full scale reading of 10 kilohertz deviation. Um, the correct deviation for CB radio should really be about 2 kilohertz, but most people push it a little bit and put it to 2.5. However, if you read the spec for this one, they say 1.5, which is absolutely crazy. Right, so let's, uh, let's do a little bit of speaking. Key up. And we speak one, one, and we're going over 10k, 10k, crazy. One, 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 two, three, four, five. Hello, hello. There, that's better. One, two, three, one. Just uh, not quite making it to two and a half k kilohertz. So that's pretty much perfect. We can go on a, a little more sensitive scale on the meter if we want to. Um, we'll go down to the 3K because at the moment we're on the scale 1 to 5 on the top, top scale on the uh, meter. So we'll go on to the bottom scale now where it's, uh, you can see uh, it's going 1 to 3. One, two, three. 
One, two, uh, hello, uh, whoa, they are two and a half ish, just slightly over two and a half on the scale. One. So that's the deviation set up pretty much nearly spot on again. We can uh, we can do no better. That fin that concludes all the transmit tests, all the transmit adjustments, and the conclusion so far is that everything is pretty much bang on. It's pushing out exactly four watts. It's pushing out two and a half kilohertz deviation. The frequency is pretty much bang on. And so we'll now move on to the uh, the receive tests. put up with the noise. Um, this is the receiver sensitivity and we're, we've got our, our cyanide figure there. Cyanide, 12 dB cyanide at a level of 120 minus 124 dBs. So they are minus 124 dBs, 12 dB cyanide which is a, a pretty good figure it's pretty good so again we cannot fault the receiver cannot fault the receiver at all um, the only thing uh, remaining to be done now of all these tests is to just calibrate the S meter so we'll, uh, we'll up the, the level from the signal generator and, uh, and make sure the S meter is reading right signal and we've got to just adjust the, the S meter trimmer now so that it reads S9 because at the moment it's uh, it's reading too high it's pinning against the stop so like everything else it's been turned up too much I have to turn that down to to S9 There you go. The signal strength meter is now reading correct. S9 for an S9 signal. So that's it. We can now put it all back in its box. Well that's it, at long last we have a working Harvard, all fully working, back in its box, Squelch works, PA works, we've done every test I can imagine, thrown all the tests at it, sensitivity is bang on, frequency is bang on, deviation is bang on, power output bang on. So now all I have to do is go out and have some fun with it. Go out to some, some of the local hilltops and do a bit of shouting out and see who I can contact. But it's been interesting. It's been quite a challenge. It's brought me to every, every bit of the way. I'm just trying to see what the serial number is. Well, I can't read it. It's a, bit, uh, it's a bit marked. But there we are. One Harvard. You've followed me all the way on this journey getting it back into life. So now it's just time to go out and have some fun with it. Thank you for watching these, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm not sure whether I enjoyed it or not, it was a real challenge. Bye for now.